Our city councilor used to sit on the board of health. He was chair of the board of health. Yes, this is Gary Thompson calling. I'm a constituent of John's. Okay, how are you today, Gary? I'm great. Um, John knows about the issue when he sat on the Board of Health. Okay. There was a coroner's in. Uh, there's some more information. A coroner's inquest, uh, December 20th, just ended. The jury's recommendation was do not deny rescue breathing from anyone. Yeah, Toronto Public Health has been teaching people all the signs of breathing emergency. Okay. And then giving chest compressions only. Well, the person's alive, and you don't want to be giving a person who's alive chest compressions and deny the mayor. John Tory and the acting medical officer of health a couple of years back, Barbara Yaffe, yeah. had a press conference. And Barbara Yaffe is doing, quote, um, rescue breathing is the most important part. John Tory said the same thing. And Joe Cressy and Joe Mahavik were standing right there on the stage with them. Joe's no longer, Joe Mahavik's no longer the chair of the board of health. Right. But Joe Cressy is. And Christian Wanta is the deputy um, chair at the board of health. She's heard about it for years, too. And there's, uh, I got a little email from the executive director at Health Canada back in September 2018. They removed rescue breathing from their protocols. They're handing out wallet cards to any Canadian citizen. All the signs of breathing emergency and don't give them any rescue breathing. Well, you've got to give a person that's suffering any breathing emergency ASAP. You've got to give them air because every second you're denying them rescue breathing. They're dying. Every cell, tissue, and organ right down to a cell. Actually, uh, a former lifeguard, so when I was going through yeah. training, that was very much yeah. part of the procedure and part of the protocol. Yeah, because your blood chemistry is going toxic every time you're, you know, when you're cyanotic blue, right? And you better get to them and start giving them some air before their heart stops, because they're in big trouble if they've drowned, right? Exactly. And their heart stops, yes, sir. So I certainly see your point. Um, like I, I reserted my, my NLS three times, and yeah. not that when I was going through, that was, the, you know, the rescue breathing was very much a part of Well, of course, because there's hundreds of causes of breathing emergency, and a doctor can't tell what's causing it, except give air, diagnose, treat the underlying cause. I know, this is costing you a fortune, and the morgue is full of people that shouldn't be there. Non-drug overdoses and drug overdoses. Joe Cressy's heard about it for years, and so is John Fillion. He runs away. John, uh, I met John once. We were at a protest uh, against, uh, what's his name, Harper, about Bill 51. Okay. Out there at Mel Lassen Square, right? And there's a bunch of protesters here, pickets in the press. John, she says, yeah, I know I don't like that bill. 51. Someone goes to hand him a picket. He says, oh, no, there's too many cameras around. I'm just a counselor. I don't say nothing. I don't do nothing. I keep my head down. I says, okay, John. <laughs> That's why they call him the Silver Ghost down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too funny, he can't save his own life either, you know. Because if you get knocked unconscious, you won't be able to stop these people who are eagerly giving you chest compressions to an unconscious person because they think they're saving your life because the doctor told them to do it. Right, right. Well, I certainly see your point. Well, I know cases right up here in North York. <laughs> right at Mel Lassman Square, the Loblaws. I'm coming to the Loblaws one day, right? Here, a scream go up. So I go see what's going on. A guy had fallen down and knocked himself unconscious. There's blood coming out of his head. His good friend, 220 pounds, is pounding on his chest. Nigel, Nigel, Nigel. And I says, Nigel's alive. Don't try and kill him. Yeah. yeah. Then, then I caught another guy. He's giving his son. His son's having a seizure right up here at Young and Finch. His son's having a seizure. And he starts pounding on his chest. I said, don't do that. Your son's alive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He needs air. Put him on his side. Right. 
Anyway, you have a good one. Yeah. And I know a whole bunch of people dead, dead, dead from it. You know, what you might call it? Uh, Arthur Potts, he was an MVP. Uh, yeah, MVP. Yeah. M yeah. M P yeah. Yeah, on the beaches. Yeah, his yeah. secretary. I know his secretary. My sister was at um, Pot's secretary's. Uh, uh, it was a cousin or something's birthday, right? It was his seventieth birthday. He was choking. Somebody gave him chest compressions only right in front of his whole family. Yeah, because Toronto Public Health told him, "Oh, if you're blue, you give him chest compressions." They had to pull life support on him two days later because he was brain dead. I know. Um, okay, well, I, I certainly... Uh, yeah, see the point, right? It's costing the taxpayer a fortune. Yeah, yeah, so I, I can certainly pass this along. When I yeah, have... at Gary CPR, I just put a video up of Dr. Peter Selby. He was the chief of addictions at KMH. Yeah. He had an office right next door to me. Okay. And uh, I, he sent me an email, and I talked to him in person. And up on the KMH website is the worst possible protocol you could do. Okay. Yeah, at Gary CPR, there's a little video with Dr. Peter Selby. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, have a great day. I'm just trying to save some lives, and it's a no-brainer. Because, no, no, you I, know I, what? I the yeah, well, no, well, there's not feedback, because, see, every child knows it's wrong. Yeah. In grade, uh, grade two, you take about how the heart and lungs work, basically, and then in grade four, and grade six, and then grade eight, and then again in high school, right? Right. A child knows it's wrong. Right. Every child knows, breathe or you die, right? What child doesn't know that? Yeah. And you get taught it in Boy Scouts and Girl Guides, right? Yeah, I just say, as a former lifeguard, I just didn't understand what you're saying. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, you don't want it to happen to you, do you? Uh, get knocked unconscious or something. Yeah, I know. It happens all the time. There's there's 50,000 poisonings per year in this province. 28,000 of them are children. Yeah. They need air. Pretty much, eh? Except for chlorine gas. You, know, you don't want to give them air. Or stuff like uh, sodium, metallic sodium, or white phosphorus. But 99% of this poisonings, you need air. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yep, yeah, you have a good one. What was your name again? Feedback. My name is Cam. Okay, you have a great day and look up my Twitter. Okay, all right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Too funny. You gotta have fun every... The paramedic service is actually very well prepared. Uh, they all have naloxone. Um, the most important thing when they get on site is actually ventilation as well as oxygen. But I think what we heard loud... Because well, that, that precise example was used as to whether other first responders should have uh, not long and, and it was said that that was not the case, that the priority, for example, when the fire department are offering the first to arrive should be on ventilation, as Dr. Yaku just said. But let me just say this about the virus. Disaster or crisis that comes to affect a big community, what's the one thing that often stands in the way of effective dealing with it? It's different protocols people have, different ways they collect information, different information they have, and the whole idea of this partnership, and I commend those who pulled it together before uh, I got involved, is to get everybody around the table so you can start to produce numbers, that they're collected in a common fashion, that they have protocols that are well agreed upon so that when things get worse, if they do, hopefully not, but when they do, that we actually can deal with this as opposed to sort of saying, oh my goodness, this person didn't tell me that, or we have a different system here. This is what causes people to lose their lives, quite literally. That's right, John. Anybody with any respiratory emergency, they're giving them chest compressions. Um, so what's working with the site? We've reversed over 168 overdoses. 33% um, have reversed with naloxone, 67 have been with other means like oxygen or stimulation. Um, we've called 911 for about half of the 33% OD is naloxone. Uh, so we try not to call 911 unless we absolutely have to. Again, the community is, is quite, uh, you know, trepidatious about paramedics and police and things like that. It hasn't always gone well. The first time we had to call 911, it was not a great interaction with them. We've had some great interactions with paramedics. We've had some really horrible interactions. And police, obviously, you know, hasn't always been great. Um, 
and people have been traumatized by these services. So even if it goes well, that doesn't necessarily mean that people feel okay about it when they walk away, even if that interaction has gone well. So we've tried to avoid that as much as possible. And every uh, supervised consumption service over time has started to use the loss of less and less and less, and oxygen and other things more and more and more. And that's what we've had to. Um, and so in the early days, we had to rely on loss of more, and we found other uh, other ways of, of responding and keeping people safe. Uh, the other thing that we, we can't tell you is we can tell you how many overdoses have happened, but we can't tell you how many overdoses have been avoided. Um, because when people have a safe place to use and they can take their time, they can measure out their dose, you can you can start doing it and inject really slowly and wait for it to kick in. They'll be like, oh, I'm really high, I shouldn't do it anymore, I'll take it out. Whereas when people are using it in a public bathroom, they're like, okay, I gotta just do this really quick. I gotta get this in me and get out. I speak so I've been up in Toronto Public Health's main office for years. Anybody could see it. This is what you do. As any child knows, stop making yourself sick living in denial as you're all being murdered on purpose. Any breathing.